think one of the most powerful, important parables in the New Testament is the parable of the Good Samaritan because it was the person that was considered like, you know, not legitimate, like the heretic that was the one that showed kindness and compassion to the person like laying in the road. And I think like a Levite passed him by and a priest passed him by, if I remember correctly. But it was the Samaritan, the like outsider, the one that was looked down upon, you know, by the the ones, the religious elite, that, you know, showed compassion and true religion. So in this day and age, you know, I feel like that's gonna be the things we're gonna be most held accountable to. I could be wrong, but you know, like how much is our compassion towards others? And it's just really interesting how it's playing out with Israel and Palestine, like how, you know, the ones that are saying they're the chosen people are like starving and, you know, demonizing the people that they've oppressed for so long and stole their land and stuff. And it's crazy how like the Orthodox have this temple fever. And yet, if you look in Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 9, but I might be wrong. Maybe chapter 8, chapter 9, I think, where, you know, Jeremiah's, I think he's talking to the priests, and he's like, you know, the temple of Jehovah, the temple of Jehovah, the temple of Jehovah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, because I don't know if those Masoretes, you know, did some funny business or what. But anyways... The point is, is there's, I don't know, like, and then I, I heard, I don't know if it's true, but I heard that a lot of Palestinian Muslims actually have more ancient Hebrew blood in them, you know, DNA in them than Ashkenazi. So, you know, just everything just seems so upside down and crazy and... I, I believe that like there's a mixing in, in all of us, or at least most of us, probably all of us. I, I believe Israel is probably in all of us, and you know, like like the true Israel, maybe, you know, I don't know for sure, it's just a theory I have, but like what side is a person going to, you know, nourish within themselves aside like the wicked kings of Israel that were like sacrificing their kids and you know being corrupt or or like Yeshua you know that was teaching you know the good Samaritan parable like what side are we going to like or what side is Israel going to cling to It's just really interesting. I feel like there's bad people in all groups and decent people in all groups. And a lot of times when we think our identity is one thing, we're like totally like from the group who we might hate, not realizing, you know, like that's how I think it's going to work out, you know, kind of like poetic justice. I don't know. It's just, I keep thinking about Gaza and how much they're suffering there. And, you know, it makes me, I mean, I definitely believe Yeshua is a suffering servant, but I definitely feel like the Palestinians are like some kind of like symbolism of it too. And I think once we realize like people, like Christians that are supporting Zionism and and the Orthodox Jews like realize like wow like you know like 
these people are being massacred and, you know, gaslit and character assassinated. You know, one thing about the Palestinians that keep I keep noticing is in these videos that are coming out of Gaza when they're devastated. We're like in America if this happened. We're so weak. We're so like spoiled, you know, like we'd lose our mind if our electricity gets cut off. But these people are like praising God, you know, they're they're praising God and that's the thing, like, that's the thing, they're praising God. Apparently the, the word Allah means God in Arabic because from what I understand, before Islam, the Christian Arabs were referring to God as Allah because that's like the Arabic word for God. Anyways. And there's some verse, I don't know if it's in Jeremiah or what, but where it's like, well, it's confusing because in the New Testament, at least in the version we have, and I, I definitely believe things have been messed with, but in the version we have in Greek, it's like Yeshua warns not to swear, you know, to do oaths. But the thing of it is, is there's this verse in Jeremiah that like, like, I can't remember. You might know which verse I'm talking about. And I keep noticing these people keep swearing to God, you know, like, you know, like as part of their language. And like here, like, I would say like 90% of the people I've met in my life, they don't seem to care about God. They don't seem to read the Bible, you know. They, they might go to church. And they might have like, a, oh yeah, you know, I'll just, you know, I believe in God. And then when I die, I go to heaven and everything's great, but they don't really want to read the Bible. They, you know, they don't want to like investigate, you know, it just, I don't know. It just feels like the Palestinians are really, really, really into God, like, like the Orthodox Jews don't even say God's name. They say the name. Hashem means the name. They put a ban on his name, which is like blotting out the name, which makes me wonder, are they Frankists? Like if you study the Frankists, like I forget what her name is. Owens is her last name. She just did a thing about the Frankist connection. And you know, if you look up about Shabtai Z and then Jacob Frank, is it Frank or Franks? So like in the Hebrew Bible, like, you know, it's like a curse to blot out someone's name. So why is the Catholic Church blotting out the Tetragrammaton? Why is Orthodox Judaism? Like why? You look at the, the Palestinians and the name that they understand God to be, they're like constantly, you know, praising his name. So, I just can't help but feel like the people, the Palestinians are like a form of the suffering servant. I mean, I definitely believe Yeshua is the suffering servant, but it just makes me wonder.